Dear students, now we are going to start a new chapter Transport in Plants in Unit of Plant Physiology. So, this is the toughest chapter in 11th Biobotany. So, you should understand very clearly if you listen very carefully. In order to understand this chapter, you should observe very, very keenly. Then only you can be able to understand about this chapter. What is transport in plants? Transport means moving of the materials from one place to other place. So this is nothing but transport. So what are the transport is available in plants? If you see in plants, there are two types of transport that takes place in plants. One is water and minerals to be taken or transferred from one place to other places. The second one is put materials which are prepared in the leaves to be transported to various parts of the plant. So there are two types of transport is very common in plants. So usually these two types of transport how in plants it is takes place. So water and minerals from soil then it is travel through the roots then stem and various parts of the plant. So this is called ascend up cell. So along with the minerals, the water is taking through the roots, root hair, roots and stem and various branches. Finally it reaches the leaves. So this is called ascend up cell. Another type of transport is it? That is Traveling of the food materials from leaves to the remaining parts of the plant. So usually the food materials are prepared on the leaf due to the presence of chloroplast. So during the process of photosynthesis, the food materials are carbohydrates to be synthesized. These food materials to be supplied to the various parts of the plant through flowing. So this is very common in plants. So this might be called as Translocation of solute. So there are two types of transport is in common in plants. These are all the things we are going to discuss in detail. In order to understand about these two types of transport, we should know about various types of physical and physiological phenomena. In order to understand about this transport of material, we should understand about various concepts of physical and physiological phenomena. Then only we can be able to understand that. So in this chapter, we are going to discuss about various types of transport, then how the transport is takes place in between cell to cell, how plant-water relationship is takes place, how absorption of water is takes place. How ascent of sap is takes place, how this water is takes place by various mechanisms like transpiration. Apart from this, we are going to discuss about translocation of organic solutes and mineral absorption as well. So, such a type of very difficult concept of this lesson, you should listen very carefully. First of all, we shall go through various types of Transport. One by one we can see about various types of transport. What are the basic types of transport is very common in plants. So based on the distance travelled by the water, that is we can call it sap. And food material called the solute. They are classified into two different types, namely short distance that means cell to cell transport the second category is long distance transport so on the basis of the distance travel the transport of materials in plants have to be have to be classified into two different types namely short distance and long distance transport Sh short distance means one cell to the other cell so it is a, a transport which takes place within the cell so it is very short distance have to be traveled as far well as long distance is concerned, this is taking from root to the tip of the shoot. 
so this will take more time. The short distance involvement, that means the involvement of few cells are mostly in the lateral direction. They are connecting the link to the xylem and phloem. That means all the water and mineral salts to be passed through xylem. Similarly, food materials are traveled through phloem. So both should be taken place through one cell to the other. So this type of transport is called short distance transport. On the other hand, the transport within the network of xylem and phloem for a long distance from root to shoot or leaves to various parts. This is long term or long distance transport. So, as well as well as well as translocation of solid are very good example. Then, based on the energy expenditure or energy requirement, there are two types of transport. One is passive transport, another one is active transport. What is passive transport? If the transport is takes place without in utilizing any energy, that means due to the concentration gradient, either the water and minerals are solute from moving from one part to the other part without using our expenditure of energy, then this will be called as passive transport. On the other hand, if the transport is utilizing energy, like ATP, which is produced during respiration, if it is using the energy or due to any biological process, if there is any energy is obtained, then this process will be called as active transport. This is also called as appeal process. So from the lower concentration to the higher concentration, if the substances like water or solute, if it is travels, this will be need certain amount of energy like ATP to travel from one place to other place. So this type of energy need, sorry, this type of transport needs certain amount of energy. This type of transport might be called as active transport. So on the, basically, this active as well as base, I mean, passive transport will be very common in almost all transport time. So that is why we should go through little by little. So if you see various kinds of transport with the help of these flow charts, we can be able to understand about what is various kinds of transport. Look at the picture. This picture will be this, I mean, this flow chart will be helping us to understand that what are the different types of transport that is self-to-self -self transport. Basically, cell-to-cell -cell transport, as I said just now, it is divided into two types on the basis of the energy requirement or the utilization of energy. They are passive transport and active transport. Passive transport means this transport does not require any energy to travel from one place to other place. For example, diffusion or facilitated diffusion. So the passive transport further divided into diffusion as well as facilitated diffusion. What is diffusion? So this is one phenomenon. This is one physical phenomenon. That is movement of molecule from highest concentration to the lower concentration without moving any, without utilizing any energy. For example, if you are lighting an agarbatti at a place, Within fraction of second, we can be able to smell all over the room within few seconds, few fraction of seconds. Similarly, just you can open the perfume bottle. If you, if you open a perfume bottle at the corner of your room, within fraction of few seconds, you can be able to smell all over the room. So this is this movement of this smell from one part to the other part is called as diffusion. That means the movement of molecule from higher concentration to the lower concentration without any energy is called diffusion. So the passive transport, it, they will not use any energy. So diffusion is a very good example for the transport of material from one place to other place without any energy. So here it is very common in liquid and gas, gaseous substances. Then facilitated diffusion. What is facilitated diffusion? 
So this is also passive transport as well as active transport is available. First of all, we shall see about facilitated diffusion. What is facilitated diffusion? So facilitated diffusion is nothing but if there is any channel or the substances or the protein material which will be helping to transport a material from one part to the other part without using energy this will be called as facilitated passive transport diffusion this is further divided into two types namely channel proteins carrier proteins what is channel proteins so channel proteins usually these are available in the membrane so if there is any materials of transfer from one cell to the other cell or one organ to the other organ they have to be transported through the membrane the membranes are having certain channel like protein or a canal like protein might be there through this canal if the materials are moving from one place to the other place through this channel such a type of protein material which are forming the can channel are called as channel protein so this channel will be facilitating the movement of molecule like diffusion without any using of energy similarly the carrier protein is also can able to facilitate the diffusion what is carrier protein the membrane substances which will be having a specialized protein which can carry the materials from one side of the membrane to the other side of the membrane there will be certain protein which will be acting like a vehicle which are acting like a vehicle for example i shall show you the diagram the picture will be helping to understand about how this transport is takes place either this channel protein or carrier protein will be helping us to transport so it is not available but i shall tell you that the channel protein is nothing but they can able to move the material from uh, here it is available so look at the picture so this is called channel protein so this is a channel which are made up of so this actually this is membrane in this membrane there is a canal is formed this canal is made up of certain protein so this protein will be providing a cha channel like a pathway which will allow the materials from outside to enter inside through this channel so this is called as cha i mean what you call it? this is for channel protein so channel protein will be providing you to transport the material from one part to the other part so the this is further divided into two different types namely pouring and aqua pouring usually pouring is a large transported protein found in the outer membrane of plastics and mitochondria even bacteria as well so these are facilitating smaller molecule to pass through them. the one more material is there aqua pouring so this is aqua pouring aqua means water or fluid so through, through this aqua pouring certain water is traveled water or fluid is traveled from outside to inside so aqua pouring is a water channel canal protein embedded in the plasma membrane it regulates the massive amount of water transport across the membrane so this is a main type of protein which will be allow the material to travel through this channel so these are called as channel protein they are moving from one part of the body to the other part of the body without using any energy this is very important the second protein is carrier protein so if you see the carrier protein picture you will understand very clearly so this is outside these are the material this material have to be travel through this membrane so this membrane are having certain protein like a carrier so what happened this is a vehicle like carrier carrier protein which will taking this material to carry and throw it to the inside material so that means that is carry from outside and enter into the allow them to or move into the inside through with the help of this 
carrier protein. So these are the carrier protein is also helping the material to travel from one place to other place or one side of the membrane to the other side of the membrane through this protein. So this is also you without using any energy. So this is also will be called as diffusion. I mean facilitated diffusion. So the facilitated diffusion which will be takes place without using energy in two ways. They are called as channel protein and carrier protein. So in this channel protein, these materials are traveled in three ways or three directions. There are three types of carrier protein classified on the basis of handling the molecules and the directions of transport. They are unipole, simple and antipole. What are unipole? What are simple? Simple. What are antipole? So this is also we can able to understand with the help of this diagram. See the picture. This picture will be helping us to understand about what is uniport, what is symport, what is an antiport. So as far as carrier protein is concerned, they can carry the material from one place to other place in single pathway. That means uniport in this molecule of a single type of single type move across the membrane independent of the other molecule in one direction. That means suppose this is inside, this is outside, if, if this protein material, if it is carrying a single material to take to the outside. So it is only one direction. So it is called uniport. What is symbol? So more than two material or molecule, but the term symbol is used to denote an internal membrane protein that simultaneously they can able to transport two types of molecules across the membrane in the same batch. So these are two molecules. Both the molecules are taking place at the same time in the same batch. Here only one molecule which is taking to the other, other side. So this is called unipole. Here two types of molecules are two molecules which are taking at the same time. Simultaneously the two molecules are taking taken into the outside in the same direction. So this is called symport. Another protein pathway is called antipole. That means here also two, two molecules are taking place but in opposite direction. See here, here this is a molecule which will be take, taken place from inside to the outside but on the other hand another molecule which will be taken from outside to the inside. So both are in opposite direction. But two molecules are taken place from one side to the other side but but in opposite direction. So this is called as antipode or counterport antipode. That is an antipode is an integral membrane transport protein that is simultaneously transport two different molecules in opposite direction across the membrane. So this is called as what do you call it? carrier protein which are traveled through three method called three directions called unipore, simpore and antipode. Now we are going to see about active transport. What is active transport? Active transport is nothing but. Similarly, as we discussed just now, that means a passive transport which is transporting the material from one side to the other side without using any energy. So this is called as passive transport. But on the other hand, what is active transport? Active transport is nothing but if the transport of material are traveled from one part of the other, one part of the membrane to the other part of the membrane by using or utilizing energy. So this is maybe from higher concentration to the lower concentration or the lower level to the higher level. So if you are moving from lower level to the higher level, it is uphill task. So whenever if you are going with the uphill task, they need certain amount of energy. Without energy, we cannot be able to transport this material. Such a type of transport is called as active transport. The main disadvantages of the passive transport, process like diffusion is lack of control. So it is not possible to control by anything. But in the active transport, it is properly controlled. So there is a possibility of harmful substances also can enter through passive transport. But on the other hand, in active transport, only a certain substances can possible 
to move. So that means it is controlled process. It is controlled transport. And moreover, it is selectively permeable. So active transport is the entry of molecule against a concentration gradient and an active process and it is need energy which come from ATP, adenosine triphosphate. But passive transport uses kinetic energy of molecule moving down from the gradient whereas active transport uses cellular energy like ATP. So they are taking the energy from cell. That's why it is called cellular energy. And the transport protein discussed in the facilitator diffusion can also transport ion and molecule against concentration gradient, but they are using expenditure of cellular energy as an active process. They can also pump use of source of free energy such as ATP or light to drive the thermodynamically dynamically appeal task. So that's all about active and passive transport. Now we are going to see about water relationship, plant water relations. So on the basis of plant water relations, we are going to discuss about a lot of physical and physiological definition or phenomena. Without knowing this phenomena, we cannot be able to understand about the transport of water and minerals as well as the food materials like solute which are transported in plants. So, one by one we can see. First of all, we are going to discuss in detail about water. Because water is very important role in plants. Water plays an essential role in the life of the plant. The availability of water influences the external and internal structure of plant as a protoplasm is most probably it is made up of 60 to 80 percent percentage by water. Because water is a universal solvent, since most of the substance get dissolved in it. And the high tensile strength of water molecule is helpful for the ascent of cell. And moreover, water maintains the internal temperature of the plant as well. And moreover, the durability of the cell is also which will be takes place by water. So water is very, very, very essential for a plant to survive, for the growth and development and various metabolic activities which will be done in plants with the help of water only. Now we are going to see about various types of physical and physiological process. First of all, we are going to discuss about imbibition. What is imbibition? Suppose, take a piece of gum, a dry gum, keep it in a beaker containing water, drop a gum piece inside the water, wait for some time, what will happen? It will be absorbed. The gum is absorbing water from the beaker and swell it. This swelling process which is absorbed, absorbs, due to absorption of water, the material if it is swell, then this process is called as imbibition. So almost all the collateral substances like gum, starch, proteins, cellulose, agar, gelatin, when placed in water, they will absorb the large volume of water and swell up. These substances are called imbibent. And the phenomenon is called imbibition. For example, if you take a seed and keep in a water, water body, then what happens? This will be swell. Similarly, swelling of wooden windows, tables, door due to high humidity during rainy season. Suppose during rainy season, you might have feel that it is very difficult to open or closing the door or windows. Why? They are absorbing moisture from the atmosphere. They are absorbing water content from the rain. Then it is swelling. Due to the swelling, we cannot be able to close the door or open the door due to imbibition. So, imbibition process is also doing an important role in physiological process. That's why we should know about the phenomena of imbibition. Look at the picture, you can able to understand that. The imbibition. Look at this picture. 
this picture will be helping you to understand that what is imbibition look at the picture so this picture will be helping you to understand what is imbibition in the left side of the picture which is showing a beaker containing water and more on a small piece of dry gum if you are dropping inside within few minutes this will be absorbing the water and swell it so this is called as imbibition this is called as imbibition next we are going to see about another important phenomenon it is difficult phenomenon it is not easy to understand like imbibition it is water potential what is water potential look at the picture so it is indicated by the symbol psi so this symbol is called psi it is a greek greek letter this is indicated by the symbol is called as psi okay now we shall discuss about what is water potential we shall see little by little what is water potential water potential is a concept of actually this was given by Slater and Taylor in the year 1968 this is indicated with the symbol psi it is a greek letter and this will be the water potential used to be measured with the unit called pascal okay what is water potential so water potential is a potential energy of water in a system compared to the pure water when both the temperature and pressure are kept constant so it is also measure how freely water molecules can move in a particular environment system for example we can able to understand very clearly if i say one thing at constant temperature pressure the potential energy or water potential is zero what do you what do you call water potential of a pure water is zero at constant temperature pressure suppose if you add certain salt little by little or certain solute or even if you are adding sugar in this solution what happen the kinetic energy of the water will be decreasing comparatively the solution which is having zero i mean the water potential is zero now if you add the solute or salt or even sugar what happen the kinetic energy is decreases so this is called water potential the water potential is decreasing now the water potential of the solution is negative value so comparatively the solution is always having low water potential than pure water so this is called water potential so the potential water potential is something but it is a potential energy of water in the system that is called water potential that is psi it is measured in pascal so this is called as water potential usually the water potential will be moved from higher pot water potential to the lower water potential usually the solute concentration what is solute solute concentration suppose in the pure water you had add salt so how much amount of salt is added that is concentration of solute can be determined that is psi yes that is solute then how much amount of pressure that is the pressure potential it is psi p in common condition water potential psi w will be equal to look at the symbol psi w will be equal to solute potential plus pressure potential that means psi s plus psi p so this is called water potential now you might understand about what is water potential water potential is something but the potential energy of water which is possessed by its nature so water potential of pure water is zero already you know that 
Suppose if we add any solute, then water potential will be having decreases. That means it will be having negative value. That means water potential of solution is negative. Water potential potential of pure water is zero. Now you can understand that what is water potential. Next we are going to see about solute potential. What is solute potential? Solute potential is also known as osmotic potential. It is denotes that the effect of dissolved solute on water potential. Already we know that. In pure water, if we are adding of salt or solute, it reduces its free energy. And it lowers the potential energy value from zero to negative. Thus the value of solute potential is always negative. So in a solution, at a standard tem temperature pressure or standard atmospheric pressure, water potential is always equal to solute potential. That is psi w might be equal to psi s. Next we are going to see about another important concept is pressure potential. What is pressure potential? That is psi p. What is psi p? Pressure potential is nothing but it is a mechanical force working against the effect of solute potential. Suppose increase, pot increase pressure potential will increase water potential and the water enter, enter into the cell then the cell becomes turgid. This is positive hydrostatic pressure within the cell and which will be causing a pressure which is called as Tergar pressure. Similarly, one more definition is also there, that is metric potential, that is psi m, psi m denotes that metric potential, psi w means water potential, psi s means solute potential, psi p means pressure potential and psi m means metric potential. What is metric potential? Metric potential is represented that the attraction between water and hydratic colloid or gel like organic, organic molecule in the cell wall which is collectively termed as metric potential. Suppose if the water is going along with the plant cell the cell, the cell wall of the xylem vessel if it is having more amount of colloidal substance like gum, resins, they can be able to absorb the water. Then, which will be imbibition pressure will be increases. This is called metric potential. So, the metric potential is also called as imbibition pressure. That means, the metric potential represents the attraction between water and the hydrating colloid or gel like organic mo molecule in the cell wall which is collectively termed as metric potential. So metric potential is always known as imbibition pressure. Next we are going to see about osmotic pressure and osmotic potential. What is osmotic pressure? Suppose when a solution is available this might be separated. One side pure solvent is there in the other side solution is there, these are completely separated by a semi-permeable membrane. Then what will happen? If you apply a pressure on solution, then what will happen? Due to the pressure that is on the dissolved solute, then there is a pressure is on the solute. This is called as osmotic pressure. So osmotic pressure is increased with increased dissolved solute in solution. So whenever the solute is added in the solution, then osmotic pressure automatically increases. That means more concentrated solutions will be having high osmotic pressure. These are also called as hypertonic solution. Similarly, less concentrated solutions are having low osmotic pressure. They are also called as hypotonic solution. So the solution is also divided into two types. Basically three types. Hypertonic hypotonic, isotonic. 
What do you mean by hypertonic? Hypotonic and isotonic. Hyper means high. Hypo means low. That means if you add more solute, it is hypertonic. If you add less salt or less solute or even zero, then this is called hypotonic solution. If you separate a hypertonic solution with hypotonic solution with a plasma membrane, then water molecule move from hypotonic solution to the hypertonic solution until both are become equal. When they are become equal, they are called as isotonic solution. So there are three types of solution. Hypertonic solution, hypotonic solution and isotonic solution. Next we are going to discuss about osmotic potential. What is osmotic potential? Osmotic potential is defined as the ratio between the number of solute particle and the number of solvent particle in a solution. That means if there is any solution, how many number of solute particles are present? How many number of solvent particles are present? Ratio between these two will be called as osmotic potential. So osmotic potential is defined as the ratio between number of solute particle and the number of solvent particle of the solution. Generally, osmotic pollution and osmotic pressure are numerically equal but opposite in direction. For example, osmotic potential has negative value, whereas on the other hand, osmotic pressure has the positive value. Now we are going to see another concept is called Turgar pressure and wall pressure. What do you mean by Turgar pressure? Suppose, when a plant cell is placed in a pure water, that means it is hypotonic solution, hypotonic water. In a pure water, if you drop a plant cell, what will happen? Inside the plant cell, more amount of salt solution sap will be there. But outside pure water, that means outer side is hypotonic, inner side is hypertonic. So water molecule from move from outside to inside, that is called endosmosis. That means the water molecule move from hypotonic solution to the hypertonic solution. Now gradually the water will be moving towards the membrane and enter into the plant cell. Then the cell is completely imbibed and it is forcing the plasma membrane which are present in the outer side which are, press, which are giving a force on the cell wall. A force on the cell wall. So the pressure exerted by the cell membrane towards the cell wall. This is called Turgar pressure. Then when the cell membrane is applying force on the cell wall, the cell wall is also applying force on the plasma membrane. Because the cell wall reacts to this Turgar pressure with equal and opposite force and counter the pressure exerted by the cell wall towards the cell membrane. This is called wall pressure. So, towards outside, there is a force is acting on cell membrane, from the cell membrane to cell wall, it is called as Turgar pressure. By the meantime, cell wall is also having an equal and opposite force towards inside. So, this force is called wall pressure. So, Turgar pressure and wall pressure make the cell to fully dirge it. That means it is completely filled with water. So now the cell is called dirge it. Dirge it means filled, completely filled. So we have seen lot of definition, imbibition, water potential, then pressure potential, solute potential, then metric potential, then osmotic pressure, osmotic potential, turgor pressure, water pressure. Now we are going to see another important physiological definition process called diffusion pressure deficit or this is also called as suction pressure. What is diffusion pressure deficit? Suppose pure solvent that is hypotonic has higher diffusion pressure. So always the pure water or hypotonic solution has higher diffusion pressure. Suppose if you are adding the solute, so addition of solute in the pure solvent 
lower its diffusion pressure. That means diffusion pressure is decreases. So difference, the differences between the diffusion pressure of the solution and its solvent at a particular temperature and pressure, atmospheric pressure, then this is called diffusion pressure deficit, DPD. This was explained by Mayer in the year 1938. So what happened? The DPD is increased by the addition of solute into the solvent solute system. So increased DPD favors the endosmosis or it sucks the water from hypotonic solution. Hence, it is also called as suction pressure. So diffusion pressure deficit can also be called as suction pressure because it is sucking the water. The material can be sucking the water due to DPD, diffusion pressure deficit. Next we are going to see another important concept is called as osmosis. Already we discussed about hypertonic solution, hypotonic solution, isotonic solution. What is hypertonic solution? Hyper means high. Tonic means solute. So this is a strong solution. So if a solute, solvent contain more amount of solute, then this is called as hypertonic. This is a strong solution. Low solvent, high solute, low water potential, which attracts solvent from other solution. This is called hypertonic. Then what is hypotonic? Hypo means low. Tonic means solute. So the solution which having low amount of solute is called as hypotonic. If it is having higher amount of solute is called hypertonic. So hypotonic solution is weak solution or high solvent or low or zero solute. So which are having high water potential. And it diffuses water out to the other solution. Such a type of solution is called hypotonic. Then iso. What is isotonic? Iso means identical. Tonic means solute. So it refers the two solutions having equal concentration. Equal concentration or same concentration. In this condition, the net movement of water molecule between them is zero. This is called isotonic solution. So the solution is differentiated into three different types namely hypertonic, hypotonic and isotonic. Now we shall go to the osmosis. What is osmosis? So osmosis is a Latin word. Osmo means impulse. That is urge. So it is special type of diffusion. Almost this is also diffusion, but the diffusion is takes place through a membrane, a semi-permeable membrane. So it is represent the movement of water or solvent molecule through a selectively permeable membrane from the place of higher concentration to the, the place of its lower concentration or from higher water potential to the low water potential. So movement of molecule from higher potential to the low potential through semi-permeable membrane or selectively permeable membrane or movement of molecule from higher concentration to the lower concentration through selectively permeable membrane it is called as osmosis. This osmosis is two types namely many types actually many types basically it is two types namely endosmosis and exosmosis. What do you mean by endosmosis? What do you mean by exosmosis? We can be able to understand that. What are the different types of osmosis? We can be able to understand the phenomena of osmosis in this picture. Later on, I shall explain about this experiment. This experiment, as far as practical examination is concerned, this experiment is very important about thistle funnel experiment or osmosis experiment. Okay, now we shall discuss about what are the different types of osmosis. Based on the directions of the movement of water or solvent in an osmotic system, there are two types of osmosis. 
one is endosmosis another one is exosmosis endo means inner or moving from outside to the inner exosmosis means exosmosis exo means outer that means from inside to the outer suppose if a cell a cell is kept in a water pure water then what will happen the cell will absorb the water the cell become turgid that means movement of molecule movement of water molecule from outside to the cell so this is called as endosmosis so the cell become turgid what is exosmosis if the movement of water molecule from cell to outside then this is called as exosmosis for example you might have seen about fish fish is having more amount of water present inside the body suppose if the fish is kept in a salt usually the fish dry fish used to be prepared by keeping them in a salty soil they used to be preserved in salty soil the excess you know, exosmosis might be takes place sometimes they might be dry in open sunlight it is separate issue but another method way another way of method in which dry fish to be prepared by using exosmosis how suppose if a fresh fish is kept in a full of salt a a basin consists of salt you can keep a fish a fresh fish in a salt what will happen after some time the outer salt is more amount of solute but inside the sac is having hypotonic outer is hypotonic then what happen water is moved from fish to outer salt then gradually water color which are present inside the fish will be absorbed this is this is called exosmosis so there are two types of osmosis the one is endosmosis another one is exosmosis what is endosmosis endosmosis is defined as the osmotic entry of solvent into a cell or a system when it is placed in a pure water or hypotonic solution for example dry resin is placed in a the water then it will be swollen similarly what happened kismis dry grapes if it is kept in milk it will be swollen so this is a, a, a example for endosmosis then exosmosis what is exosmosis exosmosis is defined as the osmotic withdrawal the exosmosis is defined as osmotic withdrawal of water from cell or the system to outside when it is placed in hypertonic solution so this is called as exosmosis this is also called as plasmolysis exosmosis is also called as plasmolysis plasma means cytoplasm lysis means breakdown that means cytoplasm is breakdown that means the cytoplasm which are present inside is going outside so this is called as plasmolysis how the plasmolysis can be understood when a plant cell is kept in a hypertonic solution for example look at the picture i shall show you this picture will be helping to understand what is plasmolysis this picture will be helping us to understand suppose this is a cell this cell if it is dropped down in the hypertonic solution then what happen the water content which are present inside the cell will be going out then at the corner of the cell will be peeled up towards inside so the plasma membranes are separate at the beginning at the corner this is maybe the starting of the plasmolysis this is also called as incipient plasmolysis still if you are kept in the same hypotonic solution then the cell still it is detached completely detached from the cell wall because the water content is going out this is called as evident plasmolysis still if you are kept in the same high concentration then finally final plasmolysis might be takes takes place so plasma lysis can be easily understood that if you keep your cell inside the hypertonic solution 
water content which are present inside the cell will be moving outside. This is called as plasma lysis. Plasma means cytoplasm. Lysis means breakdown. So the cytoplasm is breakdown by removal of water molecule which are present inside the cytoplasm to outside. So this is called as plasma lysis. So if you are keeping once again in the water, once again it is forming deep plasma lysis. That means the effect of plasma lysis can be reversed by transferring them back into the water or hypertonic solution. Due to the endosmosis, the cell becomes turgid again. It regains its original shape and size again. This phenomena or the revival of plasma lysis is called as deep plasma lysis. For example, immersion of dry resins in water. So, that's all about deep plasma lysis. Now we are going to see about reverse osmosis. The preparation of R. What is reverse osmosis? The reverse osmosis can be easily understood with the help of this picture. Look at the picture. This picture will be helping you to understand about R. Reverse osmosis. So this is pure water. This is salt water. This is separated by a membrane. Now if you apply a pressure on this salt water, then what will happen? Due to the pressure, the pure water from this side is moving through the membrane and go to this side. So in such a way, we can obtain pure water from the salt water. This mechanism is called RO mechanism. So this RO mechanism will be, will be very much useful in reverse osmosis used for purifying drinking water as well as desalination of sea water. So we are obtaining uh, water from sea water, uh, drinking water we can obtain from the sea water by desalination by this reverse osmosis method. So we also again we shall come to the thistle funnel experiment. What is thistle funnel experiment? So thistle funnel experiment will be helping us to understand what is plasma lysis, how the plasma lysis is takes place. So for this experiment we can take a beaker containing water, a thistle funnel, then a semi-permeable membrane like uh, bladder, goat bladder we can take. First of all, we can take a thistle funnel. At the tip of the thistle funnel, we can tie a semi-permeable membrane, membrane like goat bladder at the tip. Pour some sugar solution in the thistle funnel which should be kept inside a beaker containing a pure water. So the pure water is hypotonic, the super solution is hypotonic solution. Leave the setup for a few, few seconds by keeping or fix with a stand. Retard stand if you fix, read it for a some time. After few hours, if you observe that, the super solution level is increases. Why? There is an endosmosis that takes place. So movement of water molecule through semi-permeable membrane into the sugar solution. So this process is called as osmosis. What is osmosis? Movement of water molecule from hypotonic or higher concentration to the lower concentration through the semi-permeable membrane which will be called as osmosis. So, this experiment will be helping us to understand what is osmosis. Just take and reverse it. What happened? This big, I mean, this, this funnel is filled with pure water. Then, the outer beaker is filled with sugar solution. What will happen? If we keep the same time, what happened? The water molecule move from this funnel to the beaker. Why? The inside the thistle funnel, it is having hypertonic, that is pure water. Outside, high, hypotonic. The outside, hypertonic. So water molecule move from this funnel to the beaker. So here exosmosis is takes place. So both endosmosis as well as exosmosis can be studied with the help of this experiment. Apart from this, we can able to understand that potato osmoscope experiment. So this is potato osmoscope experiment. We can take a potato. We can slice the outer skin or the peel is removed, outer peel of the potato to be removed. 
then scoop a cavity in, inside. Inside the cavity, you can pour some sugar solution. At the initial level, you can pin it. Then you can keep this setup inside the beaker containing water. Leave it for some time. After some time, we can observe that the sugar solution level is increases. How it is takes place? The outer side inside the beaker which is having hypotonic water, pure water. The pure water is hypotonic. This pure water is moving from this beaker to the potato cavity through the potato cell. Potato cells are having plasma membrane. Through the plasma membrane, what happened? This water molecule is moving inside the potato cavity. So this is also called as osmosis. So potato osmosis. This is an experiment for potato osmoscope experiment. Thank you.